G'day guys, welcome back to True Footy. Let's tackle one of the more contentious topics uh, going in the AFL right now. Now, I generally dance around making videos of a contentious nature. It's not really my vibe, not really the vibe of the channel either. Um, in the past, I have made some videos that, you know, cop some heat and, um, you know, for context, I think the two ones that come to mind were two videos I did in 2019. One was about a homophobic slur that happened in cricket, which I condemned. And the other one was supporting the AFLW launch. And both of those videos got heaps of abuse, <laughs> naturally from people who, you know, feel like I'm a bit woke or whatever. Um, so I'm pragmatic that this video probably will receive some backlash as well. But you know what, you know, I, I cop abuse. I cop people unsubscribing for me not tipping their footy team. So at this point, who cares? We're in an interesting time in the AFL landscape right now. Um, in particular, like this year, more so than any other, by far, you'd think, we're seeing players get uh, lengthy suspensions, public shamings, and, you know, in some cases, big fines for making homophobic slurs. So, you know, one was Alistair Clarkson, um, then there was Jeremy Finlayson, and then the most recent one, of course, is Will Powell. Now, I suppose most of the discourse that I've seen around the place is... Um, you know, I haven't really seen people defending the use of the words that were used. Um, in particular, there's one that starts with F, which is quite a horrific word. That's not so much the discourse. I think the discourse is around, like, to what extent should these players be suspended, fined, punished in the way that they are? That's the argument people seem to be having. There's an argument out there that punishing players for, you know, lengthy bans for things they say versus some of the actions that don't get suspensions that long. That is the contentious part for some people. Um, but I, I found this topic kind of interesting at the same time. So, I mean, let's discuss Will Powell and um, Jeremy Finlayson. So I'm not gonna make excuses for these players. I have absolutely no ground to stand on when it comes to evaluating their character, either positively or negatively. So I'm not going to do that. It is what it is. But I do think, you know, sometimes it helps to have some uncomfortable nuance placed in these conversations so that we're really trying to actually get the bottom of, of this problem. And, you know, some people will say, well, all homophobia is wrong and they're right and it should be treated equally. And, and that's probably true in terms of punishments given, but I still think it's helpful to have some nuance in these conversations. So, so like I said, getting back to this word that starts with F, right? I think there's something that Finlayson, Powell and I have in common, and that, that's not that we're homophobes. It's the fact that we're all in our 20s. Well, I'm not in my 20s anymore, my God. I'm 30, Finlayson's a few years younger than me. I think he's like 28. Uh, Will Powell's probably 24. The uncomfortable truth of the situation is that if you are of that age, there is a good chance that you grew up in a schoolyard environment or a footy team environment where that word that starts with F that I alluded to was very commonplace which doesn't make it all right. I'm not making excuses, but it is important to, to consider this context a little bit, I think, because I grew up in Bunbury and it was a bit of a rough school, to be honest, and that word got thrown around so much. And ironically, you know, I don't think it was ever directed at someone that somebody knew was actually gay. It's actually usually more reserved for when you're trying to undermine a straight guy and insult his masculinity, which is pathetic. But I'm talking about a time when I was like 13, all right? So when I left Bunbury, I moved to the Middle East and I befriended the guy that is now my roommate and he is English. And I'm not gonna lie to you. Like I said, this was like 2007, I was 13 and we were having a conversation once and I let slip that word. And I'm not proud of that, but at the same time I was 13, but I'll never forget the conversation that ensued. He looked at me shocked and he was like, dude, you can't use that word. That's a horrible word. And he said, calling someone that is just as bad as calling them the C word. And I remember thinking, nah, 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 you're overreacting. That, that's completely wrong. I'll be completely honest. I think when I was a kid, maybe this was just my school, but I feel like kids didn't even avoid using that word around teachers. That's how commonplace it was. But I tell you what, from that very conversation, you know, I, I walked away from that conversation thinking what was wrong, but I have never used that word since. That has always stuck with me and I've now realized that it is quite a vicious, horrible word. So getting back to the situation here with Finlayson and Powell, who both used that word in this context. Like I said, I have no idea as to their character. So I'm not in a position to defend them and say, oh, I don't think they're actually homophobic. They probably just used it inappropriately. Well, there's no real appropriate use of that word in my opinion. But what I think is the case here is that this word for some people, and I feel like this, this might be the last generation, those who are in their 20s and early 30s now might be the last generation where this is true, but it feels like that slur amongst some others maybe is unfortunately deeply ingrained in people. 
And so in the heat of the moment, and I'm not saying the heat of the moment is an excuse, but I think what happens is when you are under stress, you're, you're pissed off in Finlayson's case, and in Clarkson's case, that's where your subconscious starts supplying you with ideas of things to say and actions to do. And if something is deeply ingrained in you, you'll often pluck out that word. And I do hold space for the possibility that maybe Finlayson and Willpower are not actually homophobic people, but have grown up in a culture where terms like this were okay, and their brain has plucked them out from the depths of their subconscious, and it's come out. Now, I saw on a podcast, Max Gorn asked the question, to what extent is the heat of the moment thing an excuse? My personal take on it is it's not an excuse really at all in the sense that these players are still have been punished. And, you know, to be specific, Finlayson cop three weeks, Power cop five weeks, Alistair Clarkson cop the $20,000 fine and a suspended two-match ban. I will also throw into the mix here that one part of their punishment that is not actually, you know, prescribed anywhere is the public humiliation aspect to it and it kind of reminds me of you know Taylor Walker back in 2021 I think it was when he made that racist remark uh, during a Sandful game I think I just think that is something to consider here the public humiliation the damage to their own personal brand the shame of it I think that is lumped into this and I don't think there's any getting away from that so it's not an excuse as far as getting out of punishment but it, it may be something to consider when you know analyzing their character again I, I'm not going to weigh into that because I don't know and it probably also would be relevant in the heat of the moment if you're comparing it to a case where somebody perhaps targeted a player that they knew was gay and you know harassed them in a more serious way, well, that would be worse, wouldn't it? So therefore, the heat of the moment argument does become material. I hope that makes sense. So let's consider punishment. I'm gonna take my hat off, it's getting hot in here. The punishment. Now, this one is interesting because we now live in a world where you can get suspended. Oh my God, my hair. You can get suspended for longer for saying something of this nature than in some cases you can get for knocking out a player. So if I'm not mistaken, Finn Lason's copped longer on a suspension than Peter Wright did, uh, even though that was you know probably a bit of an accident, for knocking out his opponent something like five weeks ago. Now, do we have to consider whether that is right? Does that make sense? On the surface, it does seem weird, but I suppose my response to that would be, as serious as concussion is, if, if an action is still incidental to the sport, i.e. a mistimed bump or, you know, going for a marking contest and perhaps like bumping in irresponsibly into someone, I don't really want to get into the mechanics of the, the whole bumping and concussion thing. That's its own thing. But regardless, those types of incidents are still at least incidental to football. Scuffling with players and then throwing a particularly harmful word out there is not incidental to football at all. And I also consider, you know, these guys are also employees, right? And I just think like, in what workplace can you imagine ever being in a scenario where you drop that F word to someone in the workplace? Can you imagine? Can you imagine what would happen in that scenario? I can tell you one thing, in my last employer, I would at the very least be in some very hot water with HR. That's the sort of thing people get fired for. And you're also not allowed to knock someone out at work. But like I said, bumping, tackling these things are at least incidental to football. Now, again, you could say that, you know, punching someone in a game is not incidental to football. Andrew Gaff, Barry Hall, Lucky Shaw's to some extent. Again, kind of a, a separate issue regardless. Now, the AFL's definitely taken a, a much stronger stance on this, you know, in recent times. And the world's changing and, and this year they're, you know, really making an example out of players for this. And I do think that this will have a positive impact over time. But I do think it's entirely possible that this will take a long time, to be honest. The effect that it will have will be that the kids and younger generations now watching football and following along and seeing players get publicly shamed and copping lengthy bans for these sorts of things. This is the generation for whom that word that starts with F may not be part of their everyday arsenal. And that's kind of what you want. And I think that is the key factor here. Like I said, we're, we're the generation where there's been a, a big turnaround on how acceptable homophobia is. And, and, you know, before my generation, it was probably racism was the key one. It's like, I feel like in my generation, we grew up thinking, oh, you, your granddad's actually racist. Like there's actually racist people out there. That's weird. Or at least that was my upbringing. It was probably the generation before me. Maybe it was the 90s even where people started to really change their tune on racism. I feel like what we're going through now over the last five, 10 years, however long you like, that's where the stance on homophobia has switched to the point where now the next generation underneath, and I see this with my sister's kids now, they're going to grow up thinking, wow, there was actually people who were homophobic. That seems so weird to me. And I do think, unfortunately, that is going to take time. So yeah, my overall view is that, you know, yeah, 
it looks weird on paper when players cop longer suspensions for same things on the field in the heat of the moment than they do for, in some cases, concussing another player. But at the same time, I don't necessarily think the AFL should be taking a lighter stance on this. The thing that we need to bear in mind is that there's a good chance statistically that you know almost every AFL team will have at least one homosexual or bisexual player. So while it might seem like there's some whistleblowing going on and players are reporting these slurs to the umpire and there might be some sort of overreaction. Well, imagine, you know, imagine a scenario where one player on the field is actually gay and that's your teammate. I'm telling you now, if you had a friend or a teammate that was gay and then there was a slur like that, I I feel pretty confident you would react quite emotionally to it. Call me new age or whatever, but I do think there is a line of banter that can happen on a football field. A lot of shit gets said, a lot of shit gets said, and I think it's okay that we have a line of what is acceptable, and I think that line is discrimination. And I was actually, um, I think I read an article, that, that guy from the, is it L- Sassy Luke podcast? I'm not too sure. He's kind of like a famous Melbourne podcaster who happens to be a homosexual, and he was talking in his podcast about a relationship he had, or he was interviewed, sorry, a relationship he had with a player, and, um, Not that it matters, and I don't really care who the player was, but I think it was actually a pretty high-level player. And the interview, you know, made me quite sad. Like, they were talking about how they had to hide the fact that they were even getting coffees together because of the scrutiny that would be placed on them, the pressure. But the other interesting part of the article was that he said that that his teammates knew, the player's teammates knew that he was gay. So you can kind of get into the mindset of these players on the field that hear stuff like that, of course there's going to be some sort of emotional reaction. So this has become a bit of a long-winded rant. I can't even really remember my original points here, but I suppose those are my thoughts on the, the bans and the punishments that are being handed out at the moment. But I suppose to summarize, you know, I do see the nuance that there are players out there like Finlayson, like Will Power, who I don't know personally, who could be saying those things as a product of the environment in which they grew up in. And the long-term play here is that the next generation doesn't grow up with these same beliefs. And I don't even know if you want to call them beliefs. Like they might not have a homophobic bone in their body, but these sorts of things act as a deterrent. And like I said, I think the, the public shaming of it might actually be the strongest aspect of the punishment. People make mistakes. Hopefully these things get better over time. In summary, homophobic comments bad punishments just fine let me know in the comments what you think guys and and try and keep it clean like i do welcome all lines of thinking but in the past particularly around topics like this i feel like people do lose sight of what's okay to say just be mindful of the way you express yourself please not for me but for other people reading as well if you believe the afl should be handling this situation differently by all means let us know for now i hope some of this made sense and i'll see you in the next one cheers